and he raced number two, and immediately Jeff Howerton takes the lead as we ride now with Hines down the back stretch. And look at that great jump by Larry in the black 33 all the way up to second. Boy, did Hines get low coming off that corner. Oh, oh hard right, into the wall and over the wall. Oh, my. Mark Gerke in car number 14 has had terrible, terrible luck here at Winchester. We just mentioned that he raced at Salem last week and had a big fire in that car. He's actually been devoting most of his time this season to the Winston All-Pro Series, where he's been running for Rookie of the Year. Just got this new Klein chassis together with that Toyota power plant. That's the four-banger out of a uh, Celica. And he took that ride right over the wall. You saw the contact right in front of the camera car as the safety crew now runs over over the wall. Yeah, you can see that he got up over a wheel, got against the wall, and just went over and out. It was, uh, it doesn't happen very often here. That wall is slanted in. Let's watch here, Gary, again, see if we can see. He gets in, he just runs right up over the right rear of that tire, got up in the air, and when the cage comes down, he just wasn't lucky enough that the cage caught him. He went on, over, and caught the fence. One the aspect trees. of going over the wall at this part of the racetrack, those trees can actually cushion the blow and absorb some of the energy. Exactly. Right there, he just got in too hard and went up over Leary's right rear wheel. It wasn't really anything that Leary could do unless he slowed down unexpectedly. As you can see him, though, from this in-car camera shot, you'll see him catch those trees, as you said, Gary, and, and you're right. A lot of times it can actually soften the blow. It acts as a cushion as you get outside the racetrack. Here comes the contact right here. He started to go down low. Did not look like he ever tried to break. He got over that right rear, and he spun around one time and climbed over the wall. The red flag is out, and you can see the emergency crew there, some USAC officials uh, looking down into uh, what is a ravine down there at the bottom of those trees. Well, that's a 38-degree bank, and on the other side of it, it's just as far down the other side as it is down to the bottom of this side. So it's, uh, it's a long way down to the bottom of that ravine, and uh, obviously he's gone down there quite a ways. Well, of course, a couple of years ago, we saw... Uh, a sprint car go over the wall there and uh, hang up in the trees. Well, we've seen several guys get over the fence. We saw George Snyder get out over uh, one and two a couple of few years ago. Bruce Field uh, was the sprint car driver I was trying to think of over the wall, and uh, he was uh, hung up in the trees for a while. They had to cut him out, but he was all right. George suffered a couple of broken arms in that uh, violent crash he took over the wall here back in the 70s. Uh, but once again, the safety crew right there, and uh, obviously we cannot give you any word until some word is passed on to us from USAC or from the emergency crew members and members of the uh, Randolph County uh, fire rescue department down there as well and of course we can well there's any hardly any way that uh, you can get a camera <laughs> up that bank I mean it's a long way to carry it up there to uh, try to get any kind of a shot at all so it's uh, probably not going to be able to see what's going on out there we're just going to have to rely on the information that we get from USAC well we understand now from USAC that he is talking to the rescuers we We'd heard some applause from the grandstand below, which obviously is a good sign. Some announcement had been made that he was talking, and apparently, uh, well, once again, these cars are built. Uh, we don't like to see that kind of abuse, but the cars are, are built to take that type of abuse. We've seen a number of guys ride out wild flips before and climb out and walk away. Well, it is really great news to hear any time that a driver takes a ride like that and comes up uh, talking a little bit about it. But I tell you, it, the race cars are so much safer today than they were a few years ago. I can remember days when people that went out of here automatically, you know, that was it for them. You know, the race cars were not built to sustain the crashes that they are today. Uh, the roll cages have helped tremendously. Probably the greatest safety device we've had in the last 25 years. Well, let's go down trackside today to Spain with this update. We can confirm that the medical crews are talking to the driver. Believe it, it uh, is true. The car has gone at least 50 feet down into that very ravine of which you spoke. It missed the big tree that could have been the big threat, but the problem now is trying to get to him. He is so far down in the bottom of that, but the driver, most importantly, is talking, and that is the news we always wait for. Earlier that that is a brand new Scott Klein chassis with the new Toyota power plant that he just really debuted last week at uh, Salem and had that big fire was very frustrated because the car was really working well. He comes up here to compete from uh, Panama City, Florida, where he has a car dealership down there. And as we indicated, he's been devoting much of his time this year to race for Rookie of the Year in the Winston All-Pro Series, the stock cars. Seems like this is one of his favorite racetracks. He always shows up here. He likes to run here, but he has such terrible luck here. I mean, I mean, if he had a duck, it would drown when he comes to this racetrack. He's crashed here almost every time he's ever been here. Well, let's go back trackside to Dave Spain. We may have an opportunity to confirm this, but it's going to be a while. Mark Gerke is actually joking with the medical personnel. He says, hey, I've been through this before. They tell me his face is a little bloody, and we may be able to get more right now from Bill Marble. I was just down there right now. 
and uh, the situation is the fact that he's moving around, talking, talking to his friends. He said he couldn't see real well right now, but I don't know if that's from the dirt on his shield. The car front end of the car is pretty well destroyed, and he said the throttle stuck. But uh, I don't think there's any bodily injury, it doesn't seem like, except he's bloody around the face from some head cuts. I'm guessing he got cut by all those brambles. He's been through uh, so much bush and shrubbery down there. Right. I, I just started to go down. I, I just started sliding like on a sled. It was so wet down there. But thank God it was soft. He didn't hit any big trees. It was all underbrush. That's Bill Marvel, the United States Auto Club, confirming that Mark Gerke is, in fact, not just talking to the crew, but joking with the safety personnel and discussing with them the difficulty of the situation, which is trying to figure out how they're going to get him and the car out of this deep ravine. It's black back there. There's very little we can show you. Take my word for it. It's about 50 feet to the bottom, and it is full of all kinds of briars and brambles. The important note is that he missed the big trees. Back to Gary and Larry. Mark Gerke has a great sense of humor, and that is a great thing to hear that he is joking. You know, he was involved in that very violent crash at Springfield last year that uh, injured Danny Dryden so badly. He was released that night at the hospital and took a long ride back to Panama City, Florida. But it is so scary to see a friend like that go over the wall. As we look again, indications now that the throttle stick's right here. Well, it's very possible the throttle stuck because he's gaining so fast on Leary, he just went right up over the left rear. And he was in the air all the time. There's no way he could use the brakes because once he hit that tire, he never really touched the ground with all fours. Maybe one tire touched the ground. As we look at it again, look, as soon as he hits that left or that right rear with his left front, the car comes off the ground and it really never touches. He had no way to stop that race car from that point. Here he goes, up in the air, the right rear is barely touching there. And by the time he hits the fence, the brake lines are all busted and everything, so it's he's history there. And he's just along for the ride. And uh, thank gosh that he's uh, that he is talking to this the people. This is with the uh, in-car camera. As it goes back in here, I, you know, it's very possible the throttle did stick. We never did see him get the brakes before he hit him, but he might have thought he could go on around him. He, he might have just thought that uh, that was the safest way to do it because when you hit the brakes, the car is definitely going to go right straight to the fence. It's not going to carry a lot of speed into that corner. That's right. Well, Mark Gerke, if you have just tuned in, there is the action up in uh, the outside of turn three, entering turn four, because Mark Gerke, the veteran from Panama City, Florida, has ridden a USAC sprint car, or a USAC midget, actually, over the wall into the underbrush about... 50 feet down from outside that turn. We'll come back with more information from Winchester. Let's go back to Davis Spin in the pit area. Well, yes, indeed, it's been tough times for Mark Gerke, but the good news, if you have just joined us, this young man whose car saw the throttle stuck and sailed all the way out of Winchester is now en route to the local hospital for what is just a uh, perfunctory, we hope, uh, check and some x-rays to make sure that the things the medical personnel don't, still don't seem to be able to believe that he is in fact A-OK -okay, are true. He was laughing and joking. He said, hey, I've been through this before, most notably, of course, in that Springfield crash. Gerke is OK. He'll be checked out, and we'll get back to the action as the mid